Bug Fables, the everlasting sapling. Have you ever seen a game that desperately wanted to be another one, but just falls short? Well, that's kind of this game. Now let's get this out of the way. This is just Paper Mario with bugs. But saying that is being generous to this title. It's not as good as the Paper Mario games, but it is as close as I've ever seen. This has you play as three different kinds of bugs named V, Kabu, and Leaf. V and Kabu meet up with Leaf while exploring a cave for legendary treasure. After that, they stay together for the rest of the game. No new characters are added, just them. This is both a good and bad thing. It's a good thing as we get used to them and their camaraderie between them is entertaining. But it also means that the battles that you do are going to get a bit monotonous because you're using the same people. But that's the problem with a lot of games that are turn-based. I just wish it wasn't mostly me using the same attack over and over again. You can use more powerful attacks but they use up teamwork points that go fairly quickly so you're going to want to use them sparingly. Now the story is unfortunately very simple. It got to the point where it looked like something was actually going to happen only say nope you need to find something else. To be fair the original Paper Mario was pretty simple in plot. It was a chapters with varied gameplay that made it great. While this also has chapters and they do change up the scenery it's basically the same thing in just new places. That's not to say they don't try to be clever occasionally but it always feels like they're just one good idea way. It feels more like the original Paper Mario for the N64 which wasn't as good as the follow-ups and the chapter variety in the gameplay. The worlds that you actually kind of explore just kind of got tedious to explore and it kind of felt like they were there just to stretch out things. As you travel through the world you'll see enemies and you can walk into them to start a battle or you can just hit them first to get an extra attack. The person who is leading will always get an extra boost to their attacks but the enemies need to be approached with different techniques to, in order to even attack them. Flying enemies will need V to throw a boomerang at them to knock them down. You might need Kabu to overturn an enemy in order to get past their defense or use Leaf's magic to coax out a burrowing enemy. Each battle had different ways of approaching it. I did like how you could switch characters on the fly. It was a simple button press. You could even have them sacrifice their turn in order to have their teammate go again with the lesser attack strength. You level up around every hundred mark of experience. I say around because they add another point every level up you do. So at some point you might need 108 experience points to level up. What I really liked was the enemies for the most part as they don't return when you kill them unless you fully leave the area. But you can go back and forth in rooms and you'd be free to explore without the worry of battle. This is really helpful in the dungeons as you're exploring and solving simple puzzles and there's also platforming for you to do. The worst part of this game is the camera. It would lock in place. It would make platforming a nightmare. It would make it very hard to gauge jumps. I couldn't count how many times I had to redo a platforming section just because I fell into the water or down a cliff. Happily they just reset you back to where you were. The enemies are still gone and no damage was done to you. Now this is not a short game. It's going to take you about 30 hours to beat this and if you add in the side quests it's much longer as this game is loaded with side quests. Some simpler than others. They give you a star system to help you figure out which ones are more involved than others. Sometimes it's just a simple fetch quest or kill X number of enemies or some of them might be more complicated like the ones that involve your characters. One of the things I didn't like about the side quests was they didn't tell you what you would get for completing them. So you might end up with something useful or you might just end up with a few berries which are used for currency. Bug Fables The Everlasting Sapling was the best Paper Mario type game that's actually not a Paper Mario game. It never exceeded the great gameplay of those titles, but it really tries. Combat is easy to figure out, and since the enemies don't respawn, you don't need to worry about always running into one in the places that you've traveled in the last few minutes. Now this game sells for $24.99, and it is well made, and it's fun enough with a lot of content. I still wait for this to go on sale, let's say about $20. There's a lot to enjoy, but the simple plot and puzzles could get a little frustrating. I so wanted this to hit a home run, but it feels like they hit a double instead. It's a great hit, but it's not as good as you would hope it would be. It's definitely a game you should play, just wait for it to go on sale.